Hi everyone, I'm Jason Swingsby, Chief Business Officer at Oxford Biomedica, and it's great to uh, talk uh, to you today at the virtual uh, meeting on the Med. So um, I'll just take you to our forward-looking statements. We're a public company, so uh, I draw your attention to this uh, slide. So Oxford Biomedica is uh, one of the uh, fast growing and leading companies uh, in the sector with a particular expertise in lentiviral vectors. Um, the first approved uh, CAR-T product, Kimriah, was uh, built around uh, our lentivector platform. And we're really proud that Kimriah is now on the market in 38 countries. And in a lot of those territories, it's the only CAR-T product uh, on the market. We have a, a whole bunch of big pharma partnerships, uh, also with BMS, uh, Sanofi, uh, and more recently with AstraZeneca, uh, and key biotech partnerships, such as with uh, our friends and colleagues at Sio Gene Therapies. So we, we have a hybrid uh, business model. Uh, we have a combination of CDMO revenues, as well as proprietary product uh, development, which I'll give you an update on today. So we're working on over 20 partnered programs uh, with a number of proprietary products that we're developing ourselves, uh, well over 580 staff and a really significant uh, uh, clinical and commercial uh, GMP footprint uh, in the UK. So I, I think we are uh, very much a, a globally leading lentiviral vector uh, specialist, but uh, broadening out as we'll see. So um, as pretty much every company at this conference sees, uh, the cell and gene market is, is growing rapidly. Uh, there were some COVID uh, related issues last year, but we, we see a good perspective moving forward. And lentiviral vectors still play a, a key uh, role in being the most accepted uh, way to permanently modify uh, T cells and indeed uh, stem cells. Um, but we're, we're, we're looking very closely at how the market is uh, developing and adopting um, adenoviral vectors for viral vectored vaccines and, of course, uh, AAP. So our core strategy as a, as a 25-year-old cell and gene company is to leverage uh, the lentivector platform. So we've been working on lentiviral vectors before. A, a lot of people were interested in them and have had a, a deep a uh, role in identifying uh, what third generation lentiviral vectors are. And we're also very much working on what fourth generation lentiviral vectors will be. And we'll be sharing more on that later this year. So we have a lot of uh, IP and know-how. We have great facilities, expertise, and FDA EMA approved quality systems. And we really leverage that uh, in two ways. On the left-hand side, uh, we partner with a lot of uh, the sector's leading companies uh, to help them develop their products. And in that sense, we aim to be a customer-centric viral vector CDMO, working with a lot of companies. But we also try to leverage that fundamental core competence to build our own innovative uh, gene therapeutics, uh, some of which we develop in-house, uh, but we've also out-licensed uh, some of those to, to companies such as Sio. And by doing this, we, we hope we have, um, you know, we're working with probably more companies than others, and we can really recycle and leverage um, that expertise across both parts of our business. So having this lentiviral vector um, expertise, IP view of the world, We've really looked uh, deeply at, at how Lenti can be leveraged uh, across multiple applications. Clearly on the left, we have gene-modified um, cell therapies, um, CAR-T, TCRT, gene-modified stem cells. But we've also run a number of clinical trials in subretinal applications for treating ocular diseases. We've run trials uh, in the CNS, in particular for Parkinson's. But we're also really, really interested in the use of lentiviral vectors in, in liver diseases as an alternative to AAV, focusing on the key aspect of lenti, which is that it integrates. And we all know that liver cells uh, turn over and divide. And if you really want a one-time treatment um, 
and endurable uh, gene expression five, 10 years, then it's really an integrating vector you want. So we think there's a, a key role for, for lentiviral vectors for uh, organs like uh, the liver and the lung, where there's um, pretty rapid turnover of, of cells. So I'll just give you an update on um, Oxford Biomedica's CDMO activities. Um, so we, we see ourselves as a leading provider of scale-up solutions for clinical and commercial supply. And we are a manufacturer of two commercial products uh, in, in the uh, viral vector field, uh, which makes us um, yeah, really experienced in the commercial setting. So in terms of our, our, our key partnerships, um, at the top, we have um, been working with Novartis in the CAR-T field since 2014 and multiple programs. Uh, we support very actively uh, SIO in development of their uh, lentiviral vector-based Parkinson's gene therapy. And um, for a year now, we've been working with BMS Juno, who licensed the lentivector platform. I'll, I'll cover those on, uh, on subsequent slides. Um, we work with Orchard Therapeutics on a number of programs and last year signed a deal with Beam Therapeutics um, to emphasize that lentiviral vectors still have a role in, um, in approaches that use base editing and uh, gene editing of T cells. Um, we have a couple of um, haemophilia programs which are in vivo lenti programs with Sanofi, uh, also with Beringer Ingelheim and the Gene Therapy uh, Consortium of UK Universities uh, for Cystic Fibrosis, partnership with Santen, and uh, I'll update you on our um, work with AstraZeneca on COVID vaccine manufacture as well. So we're probably best known for our partnership with uh, Novartis, where we are the uh, commercial manufacturer of Vector for Kim Ryan, which as I said, is now approved in 38 countries. Um, but we work uh, on additional uh, programs with Novartis. So we've been an embedded part of their organization for many years now. Back uh, just over a year ago, we signed a, um, uh, a broad um, collaboration with BMS Juno to give them access to the Lenti Vector platform for both CAR-T and TCRT programs. Uh, it's $10 million upfront uh, with a five-year uh, clinical supply agreement. And uh, it's been great to work with uh, BMS Juno uh, this last uh, year. Most recently, um, we've been working with Oxford University and then rapidly soon after with AstraZeneca to scale up the manufacture of AZD1222 which is also known as the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. Um, we signed a commercial supply agreement worth in excess of 50 million pounds uh, back in September, 2020. Uh, we have uh, a number of our GMP facilities working 24 seven, producing um, millions of doses per week of drug substance of this uh, vaccine, which is approved in uh, UK and many other territories around the world. Um, and um, it's really been um, uh, a tremendous project for us to be in, involved in. And uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank our employees who have gone uh, above and beyond to deliver uh, this uh, huge project successfully. So in addition to the fast growing viral vector CDMO business, uh, we develop uh, products based on our own lenti vector platform. So this is really uh, very much a, a patient centric uh, activity, uh, leveraging our, our two decades of uh, expertise. So at the top, you can see uh, a number of programs that have been partnered. Um, I'll, I'll tell you more about the SIO program, um, but at the Bottom, you can see that we still have interests in ocular gene therapy with wet AMD and a lenti approach to LCA10, uh, as well as at the bottom, uh, applying our integrating lentiviral vector platform for the treatment of a number of diseases that we think can be targeted by liver 
gene delivery. Um, but before I just update you on, on SIO, um, we have our own uh, OXB302 program, which is a uh, 5T4 CAR T therapy. Um, uh, 5T4 is an oncofetal antigen uh, expressed in a lot of solid tumors and some liquid tumors. And we're really looking forward to making strong uh, progress in preclinical development for that program. And having uh, had many, many years of interest and expertise in 5T4, uh, a, a very promising CAR-T target. So um, I'll just highlight our ongoing uh, partnership with uh, SIO Gene Therapies, previously Axabant. Um, this was and is a, um, uh, an approach to reprogram the uh, putamen to generate uh, steady state levels of dopamine uh, to uh, treat Parkinson's disease patients, moderate to, to severe Parkinson's patients. So although we outlicensed this program uh, for worldwide rights to uh, SIO back in uh, 2018, we're still centrally involved in uh, the manufacturing uh, of, of the program. And uh, you know, we're, we're highly, highly motivated to see this uh, program uh, progress through uh, development because uh, we think it's a great product. And um, yeah, it's been a strong partnership over the last two and a half years with SIO. So underlying both the two um, aspects of the company, uh, proprietary product development, as well as uh, leading viral vector CDMO, we, we have our Lenti Vector platform, which is clearly an innovation centric business. And we're proud to, we believe, have probably more people working on lentiviral vectors in an end-to-end -end way than uh, anyone else. Uh, we believe that's the case. Um, so this rather complex slide just gives you a snapshot of, of the proprietary platform innovation we, we have. So we work on the whole spectrum of activities. Uh, we generate um, novel IP, novel technologies around better lentiviral vectors, uh, focusing on, on ever safer vectors, uh, larger delivery capacity. We tailor those uh, vectors to uh, specific attributes that may be required. Um, we work very heavily on generating new uh, packaging and producer cell lines. Um, Lenti Stable is our platform for stable uh, producer cell lines for lentiviral vectors. We've done a lot of innovation on novel upstream technologies. Um, U1 and U2 haven't been broadly disclosed yet, but we'll be sharing more of that uh, later this year. But we really invest heavily in R&D in, in ways that we're not sure many others do in the field. Um, we work a lot on proteomics, transcriptomics to understand how lentiviral vectors are really made, uh, automation to, to um, optimize data flows. And we have a, a, a very promising R&D collaboration with Microsoft Research, looking at how um, artificial intelligence and machine learning can be leveraged to generate insights from massive data sets across many experiments that we think um, others are not yet uh, doing in, in the field. So um, yeah, it, it's really a one-stop shop, problem solving R&D capability that we offer um, to our partners, um, often, not always, but we also leverage uh, for our own proprietary product uh, development. So just to try to very briefly uh, conclude, uh, we are um, a revenue generating organization. Um, uh, we haven't disclosed our 2020 uh, financial uh, uh, full year results yet, but uh, over the last few years, we've seen uh, good growth in, in revenues. Um, EBITDA has been uh, slightly positive or, or slightly negative. And um, you know, we, we see this uh, hybrid business model um, as a way to build a lot of strong core competence, uh, but also to leverage that for uh, long-term uh, uh, upside in owning uh, rights to, to therapeutic products. 
So to just summarize, um, Oxford Biomedica is a um, fast growing, um, revenue generating uh, company in the cell and gene sector. Uh, with uh, a, a, a truly recognized expertise in lentiviral vectors. Commercial, the first commercial manufacturer of lentiviral vectors, FDA and EMA approved. We're now a commercial ma manufacturer of adenoviral vector based products. And we're really considering opportunities for us to broaden out uh, further into offering other people adenoviral vector um, solutions. Kim Ryan's was the first FDA approved um, CAR T product utilizing our Lenti Vector platform, and we very much hope to work on other commercial um, CAR T products. We work with a lot of the sector's leading cell and gene companies. Um, we have a strong financial uh, foundation from our CDMO uh, business, and we really do have the scale and depth of expertise in the company to not only take on the standard challenges, which are already hard, uh, but the non-standard uh, challenges relating to viral vector development. So uh, we, we really hope you have a, a good conference and that we meet you digitally one way or another. And we look forward to a much better um, second half of 2021 and an even better 2022. Thank you very much.